Okay, continuing with our tutorial today, we're going to change the color of some of our monsters. Uh, just a reminder, my website, filmsbychris.com, that's Chris of the K, there's a link in the description. There, you can search through all my videos. I have hundreds of them on mostly programming. Uh, and also, if you go to filmsbychris.com forward slash git search, you can search through my git projects. So you can always find the examples in this tutorial as well as other examples I have done. Uh, all the links for all this is in the description. Of course, the videos I'm doing right now in this series, it is a series, there's a link to the full playlist in the description of the video, but everything I go over in this video series, there is sample code for up on GitLab. Again, a link in the description. It's gitlab.com forward slash metalx1000 doom zscript examples. And there you can go through all the examples. Today, we're going to be working with the um, color change. So we're going to go to this color change directory. You can see there's three files. We're going to recreate those today. Main focus is on this file here, and we're going to recreate it step by step. Also notice that in my scripts, sometimes I'll put comments that are links to helpful uh, URLs. And two of the ones we're going to look at today is we're going to be working with translation to change color. Here's the notes on that, the documentation on that, and also the palette here we're going to work on. So again, there's links in the example code to all this, but let's go ahead and jump right in and I am in a directory here. I've created our files, but uh, most of them are empty at this point. We're gonna recreate them. Our zscript.zsc file uh, just tells us the version of GDDoom that we're running, with G's, uh, the Z, uh, <laughs> zscript that we're running. And I'm saying to include the color translate script file here. Again, you could, for a small project, just put everything right in this file, but it's good to break it up, especially as your project gets bigger. So that's what I'm doing in these tutorials. So let's go ahead. I'm using Vim as my text editor, but use whatever text editor that you like. Just make sure it's text editor and not a word processor like Word, because that's not a text editor. Um, but I'm using Vim, technically NeoVim, and in here we're going to create a file. And I'm gonna do some copy and pasting just so you don't have to see me type everything. Um, but what we're gonna do is we are gonna create a new Keiko daemon, okay? So a class, and I'm just gonna call him new Keiko, okay? That's, that's my um, current, what I'm naming it. I can name it pretty much whatever I want. Now in previous videos, we created it and we called it actor and we gave it all the values that we copied and pasted from exam in this example, the Keiko Demon. But if you just say Keiko Demon, it automatically takes all the attributes of a Keiko Demon, but then you can override them inside this little class. Uh, for this, normally you would probably replace the Keiko Demons unless you're creating a whole new object for your own custom maps. Right now, I'm just gonna replace the Zombie Man because we're gonna jump into Doom 2 and they're right there when we start off the level. Uh, so here we are now going to set some defaults so we're going to say default and in here we're going to do translate let me just copy and paste because it will be quicker uh, there's a lot of examples in here so one we can do that's a preset one is we can say ice okay so what do we have so far we're saying we're creating a new object called nude keiko it is taken on the attributes of a keiko demon and then we're going to replace all zombies and all maps with them and we're translating its color to a default uh, preset of ice which we're going to make our own presets here in a little bit at this point i can just say gz doom dash file and in this case we're still working with the directory so i'm saying dot look at the current directory now in a previous video i showed you could package this all up as a pk3 file and you could give it the pk3 file i'm saying that this is a doom 2 i'm pointing it to my doom 2 uh, iwad and we're warping to map one so if we go in here where the zombie men were, we now have Keiko demons that are ice color. So it just translates over to that ice color. But we're gonna create our own so we don't have to have that preset there. So I'm gonna go back into our code here and I'm just gonna comment that line out uh, so that it doesn't run, but it's still there for reference. And here is another one, okay? So actually let's start with this one. I've got a bunch of examples here. So what is it saying? Okay, we're saying translate, okay? Then we have the alpha here, okay? So alpha, or not the alpha, but the saturation. Uh, and what we're going to do here is we are setting it from zero to 255. Basically, we're setting it up to 255, meaning it's fully desaturated. What does that mean? We're making it grayscale. It is now gray in color. Uh, and then what are we gonna do? We're gonna translate from one color to another. So we're saying, okay, we're going from nothing to, this is RGB. If you haven't worked with colors before, this might be a little bit confusing, but these three values are going to be from zero to one. And the first value is red, green, and blue. 
So we're basically saying, okay, set everything to zero and then bump up the red to one. Okay, so to full value. I will save that. Now our Keiko demons will be a red color, but they're tinted red, right? It doesn't translate individual colors. It's just kind of made them a red tint. If we were to go back into here and we were to change it, just by changing this part here, we can change this to zero, right? And I said this is red, green, and blue. You guessed it, this will now change them to a green color. If we go back in here, if we were to set this last one to one, it would be a blue color. But what happens if we set it red and blue? And of course you can do decimal points between zero and one. We're gonna jump in here and now they're going to be a purple color because we mixed the red and blue. There's no green, it's just red and blue, so you get this purple color. So that's great that we were able to translate the colors. Let's look at another option. I have more options, more examples in the examples code, but let's jump ahead to simplify it a little bit because that again was tinting at a color, but let's say we wanna change certain colors of it because right now it looks like they're just tinted all one color. We wanna change certain color values to other color values. So what I'm gonna do here is paste in this code. So what we're saying here is we're going to use the palette and we're going to change the range from 176 to 191 we're going to change that those values to 112 to 127 so what is this going to do i'll put in the notes here this is going to set the range of reds to greens so let's look at this over here again there'll be notes right here in the script that bring you to this palette this is the palette we're working with doom so if we look here, we are saying to change 176. So 176, we find that there's 176 right here. Can you see where I'm pointing? Let's zoom in a little bit. 176 right there to 191. So that's this. So we're changing all this color, this whole red row, and we're gonna change it from 112 to 127. So 112 to 127. So these colors, just these colors are the only ones we're changing from these colors to this range. So now, if we were to save this and run it, we now have green Keiko Demons, but only the colors that we specified have changed. So you can see their faces are still red. The mouths are still blue, but we changed them to a green color. Let's go ahead and make them a pink color. So, I'm going to again look at my code here, Oop, example code, and this is the example for changing them to pink. So I will put that right here. And what colors are we changing? 176 to 191, so let's look at that. 176 to 191, so we're changing that first range, we're changing all of this still. And then here we're going to go 255 to 254. That's these pink colors here. So you can see it doesn't have to be the same length and range. It's going to, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, interpolate the colors in between or lack of colors in between, I should say. So now that we do that, all these red colors are now going to become these five pink colors. We will go ahead and run that. And there they are. They're now a pink color. But only those reds that I specified are now those colors. Let's go ahead and change a different monster and we will go back into here and for right now I'm just going to comment this out. We'll bring it back later. And what are we going to do now? Let me go ahead and copy some more code here. I'm going to paste this in here. Now, I can run this. Oh, wait, let me change this. So this says zombie man. Again, I'm just doing that just so that they're right there when I start the level. So now our zombie men are going to be pinkies that are green. Let's go ahead and look at this a little bit more. 
what do we have here? So instead of just giving one range, you can comma separate and give multiple ranges. So I'm saying change 16 to 47 to 12, 112, 20, 127, and 169 to 191, and we're gonna translate that to 152 to 159. So if we go back to our palette here, and again, this link is very useful, so we are changing, again, 16 to 47, so we find 16 to 47, so I'm changing both of these rows, and we're moving those over to 112 to 127, so we're changing this row and this row, which may, may even be out of the range of the pinkies, but as long as those colors are in there, we are translating them to this colors. But then we're also saying 196 to 191, 196, 196, is that what he said? 169, yeah, I thought that was wrong. 169, so right here, this color to 191, so from here to all these reds, which again, is probably out of range for the pinkies, but I'm putting it in there. And we're changing it to these colors, 152 to 159, 152, 152 to 159 to this color. So I'm not even sure if that's in the range of the pinkies, but I just wanted to show you that you can put in multiple values on one line. But let's take it a step further. Let's go ahead and comment out this line. And I'm going to create a new function down here. And again, I am just going to look at my example code here and I am going to um, copy some stuff. I don't want this video to be too long. So I'm gonna paste in a function here that I created. What does this function do? It's called color set. And we're gonna grab a random number. We're creating a variable called r and we're saying it to a random number between zero and two. Well, from zero to two. So it could be zero, one, or two. Then I check, is it zero? If so, set the translate color to green demon. If it's one, set the translation color to blue demon. If it's two, then set the translation to red demon. Where do these values exist? This took me a minute to figure out. Even though the documentation uh, specifies it uh, clearly, you have to create a lump file, which are just files inside your project. Um, and we put in these values. So I have this translate file, so T-R-N-S-L-A-T-E, do it all capitalized, it doesn't have to be all capitalized. Put it in here, and so now I'm creating these variables that can be called anywhere in the game that uh, we're translating to these values. So I'm setting what we did before, this is the values for the green pinky, but we're doing it for blue and for red. So I looked at that palette, I picked out those colors. Now, going back to our script here, we have this function that's gonna call one of those, but we need to put that somewhere. So where are we going to put this? Let's go back to the sample code, example code. And I'm just gonna create a state. So really at this point, we don't need the default, but I leave that in the example code so you can uncomment it. So what do you have here? So remember states are the different states. are saying when a pinky demon is spawned with no delay, automatically run this function and then set look, and then instead of loop, we say wait, which means just kinda, I have a note here, uh, it loops the previous frame instead of the whole state. Otherwise, it will constantly be changing their color and it actually, uh, I believe, makes the game crash, because I'm pretty sure that's the first thing I did. But we have to set, we're using this sprite with a delay of this, and they're looking for you, and they're gonna do that over and over again. After the first time they run, they're gonna run this. So, if I copied and pasted everything right, I can now run this and each pinky demon will spawn as one of those colors randomly. So those ones are blue now. If I shoot, let's have some others come around the corner. Up oh, there's a green one and there's a red one. And again, if I run the start the level over again a couple of times, there we go. They are random, so you will get different pinkies in different colors in different spots. So they're not always gonna be the same color. Of course, you could add more colors if you want. So that's how you can create pinky demons that change, or really any monster, you can change their colors by translating it, looking at that palette, translating them over, and then just looking at my code and modifying it for your use. So that is how you can change the color of monsters as they load, uh, either setting static colors in different ways, or you can create a function that will randomly choose one of your predefined functions, colors. So, and here we're using the A set translate, which is after you've done your defaults, this is the function that will translate their color uh, to one of these variables that you've created. Again, you just need this uh, translate file.
And again, it took me a long time to figure that out, even though it states it right in the documentation that you need that file. I'm like, where do I put these variables? Anyway, thank you for watching filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description to the full playlist, as well as all the example code up here on GitLab. Again, you can download all the examples. You just have to go into the examples directory, pick one, and then once you're in that directory on your system, you just run... Um, it tells you here in this project there's a link to the playlist but also you just go into the directory and you run gzdoom file dot saying look at this current directory uh, and then it will ask you what version of doom you want to run and then you go into the game and it will be functioning that is it thank you for watching films by chris.com that's chris the k i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you find it useful and i hope you continue watching this series i have more to come have a great day